Hey, 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 guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to day three of the Coach My Life Volume 3 Anthology. Listen, I am your vision coach, Latoya Early, helping Christian female startup coaches do three major things in their coaching business. I help you discover and master your message. I help you increase, massively increase your online visibility with your words, and I help you monetize your coaching programs through our online on-demand coaching and content niche certification program. Listen, I am so excited. I hope that you are just as excited with me. You know it is our time. It is our time to talk about um, uh, the Coach My Life Anthology. We are with one of Chase Great's vets. How about that? One of our amazing coaches, Diana English, and she's going to talk about the matters of the heart. And so what I want you ladies to do is I want you to take the time and I want you to share this broadcast. Share this broadcast with your audience. Share this broadcast with people who you feel could benefit from this so that we can share this information so that we can share this out. I am excited about today's discussion as we go forth and share, just giving more information about um, about being a parent, being a mother. So listen, go ahead and share this out on your platforms. Go ahead if you wanna share this in your groups, if you wanna share this on your social media platform, we are super excited to share this content with you and your audience. So while we are doing our sharing out and getting ourselves prepared, I want to invite all of the single moms to come on in, come on in and share this fantastic experience with us so that we can pour some, some love and some encouragement in you on today. I'm super excited. We're with renovation coach, uh, Diana English, and she's going to really share with us, first of all, her position in coaching and what she does as a coach, but what is it that she do for moms? What is it that she does for single moms? What is it that she does for single moms with daughters and specifically. So one of the things that I love and you ladies know is I'm, I'm always talking about narrowing your niche and being specific on the problem that you're called to solve in your coaching business and talking about whose problem that you're called to solve. And so one of the areas that renovation coach Diana is going to talk about is that problem, solving that problem that some moms may have, you know, with the relationship between their daughters, with the relationship between them, their daughters, and their, their children's father. And so I'm excited about today's discussion because it's going to really give us the opportunity to open up the floor and to really create dialogue around this matter. This is one of the matters that we talk about all the time in silence to our girlfriends in the back, back rooms. But do we really stand up and say, listen, I need to, to go through this process so that I can create a better life for my child and for my family. So come on in, make sure you're coming in, sharing who you are. Let us know that you are joining us on this fantastic Wednesday night. We are in day three of the Coach My Life anthology, the pre-launch. And so I'm excited because on December 5th, we're going to have our virtual book launch December 5th at 11 a.m. There is a link available for you. The link is in the caption. If you have not already registered for the virtual book launch, I encourage you to register for the launch. We are going to spend the afternoon training and really sharing five amazing proven strategies for you to win during a pandemic. So I hope that you um, take the time to register for this live event so that you can get all of the nuggets, all of the, all of the, the love that we have for you on tonight. So let's go ahead and jump into tonight's um, live experience. I wanted to grab my notes so that I can make sure that I am asking all of my good questions and I don't forget to leave anything out as Diana and I go forth on tonight. So I would love for Diana to open up the floor and share with us what type of coach are you, Diana? First of all, before we go there, welcome. <laughs> this is your night. This is your opportunity. This is your chance to really share who you are as a coach, share what you do, and talk about your contribution to volume three of the Coach My Life anthology. And so I'm excited to share this, this message with the moms. I'm excited to share this message with the community. And I'm excited to introduce you to the moms who are looking for you, because there are moms who are definitely needing your services. So what type of coach are you and who do you serve? 
Okay, thank you so much, Latoya, for that amazing introduction. I am um, renovation coach Diana English, and I specialize in helping single moms tear down walls that they have created to hide the true identities and the matters of their um, heart. And I get asked a lot, why did I pick um, renovation? Because I want you guys to know that when I've come, I'm coming in to disrupt your, your found disrupt your pattern. I need, I'm coming in to shake your foundation because sometimes I love watching um, home improvement shows. And it's and sometimes we look at our lives like that. We be so broken inside and we put on makeup, we put on clothes and we, and we, we, we take care of the outsides phenomenally, but we, we destroy, we, we, we let the inside of us, we let the, our insides destroy us. And sometimes we be thinking that we, we look good, but sometimes the, the issues and the matters of our heart pours out into us in, outwardly, like our, our behavior, our personality. And it's, so I'm coming in, I'm going to be, so if you got some mold, we get into the root of where that mold came from. We pulling that mold out and we're replacing it with new and better things. Um, and the reason I did this because I have two teenage daughters. And when I was growing up, I was, I took psychology class because I said, I want to get to understand daughters before I have to understand daughters because I, I, I just like the um, stereotype like, oh, you got daughters. I know you're probably ready to pull your hair out. And that's not my testimony. I have amazing daughters and it's based on how I raised them. So that was another thing. I want us to change the trajectory of how people look at teenage daughters. They automatically assume that they're ratchet. They smell in their cells and stuff like that. And that's not my testimony. And it was based all in, I think, in how I raised my daughters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that I love is Diana has a group. She has a Facebook group. And so once we are um, all done with tonight's live experience, I want Diana to go into the, the comments and drop the link to her group. She has a group for moms. It's called A Mom's Touch. And so in this group, she allows, she gives the platform or offers the platform for the other moms to show up and to talk about their children and to connect with other moms because it is her desire from what I see from what I've learned from Diana over the past several years that Diana and I have been working together what I've been able to see is her passion to support moms her passion to assist moms in breaking down those barriers and removing some of those layers and that limited thinking that we have when it comes to raising daughters and so I, I wish my mom was on here so she can give her two sentences because she did raise two daughters and I'm not gonna say that I was the easiest <laughs> because listen, you know, thank God for deliverance. But I will say that because of how she raised me, it's because of who I am today. So I do commend, you know, moms who are raising daughters and moms who are supporting, you know, other friends or sisters who have daughters. My sister have a daughter. I don't have a daughter, but my sister does. And so I'm just like, oh, it takes a village. And so I'm, I'm glad to know that you're offering this type of services um, to single moms or to moms in general. So I want you to, after having the opportunity to, you know, take a look at your, your contribution to the, to the project and just learning more about you, I want you to share with the, with our audience, a quick synopsis on what your chapter will be about. What will your readers be looking forward to once they purchase the book? Um, so my chapter is called What's in the Heart, but uh, what I did is I hit on two different things. I hit on um, forgiveness and I also looked um, hit on lost and found. And so, because I need you guys to understand that God is our heavenly father and so if we if we're not aligned with him the right, it's a trickle down effect. And so I had I had a hard time building a relationship with my heavenly father. It trickled down into me having a personal relationship with my my father. And then I attracted men in places that my It looks like we lost you, Diana. It looked like you muted yourself. Nope, you're still muted. 
important it is to have a solid foundation with the father, your father. And it also talks about how if you don't have a good relationship with your with your your father, fix that relationship. And also as well, I, it's a lot of women who hate their baby dads or whatever the case may be. And we have to take our responsibility in the case we lay down with them. You know what I'm saying? So we have to take our responsibility. And what I learned is once I was able to build a relationship with God, and I checked myself, I was able to take my expectations off of how I felt my dad should love me from my perspective. And it was more easier for me to forgive the father of my children. So that's- Okay, so let's, let's pause there for a second because we lost sound for a minute. So yeah. we wasn't able to, we did. So you were, for, for whatever reason, it muted. So we missed a nice chunk of what this chapter is gonna be about. Now, one of the things, it's okay. It's okay. One of the things though that I was able to gather from what you're saying now is that alignment. And so I want you to talk about that alignment and talk about how important it is for, for moms, whether or not they're single moms with their children or their married moms with a child outside of that marriage. What does that alignment with the father have to do with their ability to forgive the father of their children if, if that father is absent? So my take on it is you have to know how forgiving you are to forgive someone. God is a forgiving God. And I was in areas of my life, like I said, where I was in church and I was taught to love God out of fear compared to loving God out of love and how sufficient his grace is. So it makes, it made me, it made me, it made me hard to believe his disposition of grace because I was, you know, was taught like, you know, this is why this is not happening to you because you, you're seeing, you're seeing, you're seeing, you're seeing compared to, hey, God love you so much that these are things that you don't have to do. So, um, okay, wait, I, hold on, hold on, hold on. You just, you, you, you're pouring too much and you're moving too fast and I need you to slow down gotcha. because you just said something and, and one of our viewers just said that she's interested in this topic because she has a 16 year old daughter. So okay. one of the things that you just said was, is you had to kind of check yourself because you start blaming the absence of the dad, certain issues that you were going through on you. Um, I, I didn't, I said, I want us to take our own responsibility as far as people that don't like that, the ones that don't like the, the fathers of their children, we laid mm -hmm. down with them. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. So we have okay. to take our responsibility in that we chose them or we, they chose whatever the case may be. And we let it happen. But what I learned, um, with, so once I learned how to build a relationship with God outside of religion, it made it easier for me to love my dad where he at my dad. So I come from in my house, even today, like we, my mom, my daughters, we hug, we kiss all day. We leave out the house, we hug, we kiss. And those were the expectations that I was expecting from my dad. I didn't get those things. And I would be disappointed because I thought that he was supposed to treat me as my mom did. That wasn't wow. the issue. So once mm -hmm. I said, and I met my dad's mom once, and when I met her, she wasn't a, she wasn't a affectionate person. Like it was like, oh, hey, you my granddaughter. Well, how you doing? You know, say so. And so I seen, okay, now my dad doesn't have that to give me. So who am I to put my expectations on him, wow. expect him to uphold those expectations, and then get mad when he don't? So once I took my expectations off of how I felt my dad should love me it made life easier. I had to meet him where he is. And then Got once it. I did that, it made it easier because I, because my God, because God had forgiven me as my heavenly father. I have forgave my father for what he couldn't give me. It made it easier for me to forgive not only the fathers of my children, but all the men that I allowed to take advantage of me because I wasn't in right position mm. in the beginning. Okay, so what you telling me, okay, I'm getting ready to reiterate what you just said. So what you're telling me, and for all of the single moms who is holding all of this resentment, all of this unforgiveness, all of this bitterness towards the, the father of their children because of their absence, that we should stop um, 
blaming, although they are, you know, men and they should be responsible, Absolutely. but we need to try to look at the picture where what if they didn't have it in their lives and they don't know how to versus what they're not doing. So you're, so you're saying let's change the perspective on how we're looking at the absent father and instead of blaming him, let's get in alignment with our heavenly father so that we can forgive him, pray for him. And so that that healing process can take place. Absolutely. And then it also makes it easier for you t- as a parent, because I've, I've seen it so many times where moms, um, because of the resentment or the dislike that they have for their father, they don't allow the fathers to be in the children's life. They've, they've taken the they've taken the focus off the child and they made it about them. When that baby came into place, it's not about them anymore. So one thing I always done in my house, we don't, we don't bash dads. Your, your impression of your father is your own. I got a lot of words I want to say, but I'm not going to share them with you because I want you to have, because I knew how it felt for my dad not to be. My dad was, he lives in Ohio, but he wasn't there all the time. So I knew how it felt not to have your dad in your life. And I didn't want that for my daughters. However, I had seen it was becoming a generational thing. Like my dad wasn't really in my life. And now here I am, I'm raising my daughters and their dads are not in their life. So that's one thing I never did. We, your dad is your dad. And the Bible say, honor thy mother and thy father. It didn't say how they treat you, you honor them. That's one thing that we do. We honor thy mother and thy father. And now they're old enough to see what they dads are what their dads are for themselves and I can say Ah. it wasn't because of me you know okay okay so I like this so you're saying that you know and and I like I love this discussion because again this is one of those discussions that we have a hard time having you know with moms who where the father is absent because the first thing we want to do is we want to you know point blame at the father and again this is not to um excuse or to justify the absence of fathers um over the last two you know days we've been talking about how a lot of the rooted issues that women have that women have is because of fatherlessness is because of the absent father and so i'm and i'm not at all saying that you know we should excuse the man or that you know we shouldn't hold them to any type of accountability what it sounds like you're saying is that you help moms release themselves from that resentment, from that bitterness, because forgiveness does not hurt the person that needs forgiveness. It hurts the person who needs to forgive. And so once you're holding on to that bitterness, that resentment, you're you're limiting your own life, not theirs. And so I love to have this, this, this type of dialogue because I know that there are, you know, moms out there who are fussing at us <laughs> right now, like, uh-uh, <laughs> you know, fussing at us for having this type of perspective. But one thing I can say is the longer you hold on to that bitterness and that resentment, the longer or the more uh, potent it becomes in your children. And so one of the things that you just said is that you've given your daughters the opportunity to create their own idea of their dad. I'm gonna let you form your own opinion without you pushing you know, your personal feelings on them. And I think that that's really brave and I think that's really strong. And so I, I appreciate that. So, so to talk more about the chapter, when we talk about who is this chapter for, can you give us a, a more in detail? We know that it's moms, you know, with children, but can you give us a more a more detailed version of who could really benefit from this chapter? Um, so it can be a twofold. It's it can be anyone that's dealing with any type of forgiveness, even if it's starting with yourself. You can it's, so it talks about that, and it talks about anyone who has ever been in a place where they felt that God was so far from them that they couldn't find them. Um, I also talks about that um, because in January, the message that God gave me in that book, it the devil almost tried to make me lose my lose my mind not to tell that story. So, um, like I said, but it was all because I was building my relationship with God and the information that God was giving to me. It was an experience with God I had never had, and the information was coming so fast I didn't know what to do with it, and my reality and my re- 
the things that he was showing me in my reality collided with each other. And it, you know, it landed me in the psychiatric unit because it scared my family because it was a unnormal behavior that they hadn't seen for me. So it's for the ones that feel like they're lost and God don't hear them or he's not there. And it's also for anyone that needs any type of forgiveness and mainly what it do, I'm, what I'm going to do, my chapter is not going to be for everybody because you have to be in a position where you're completely ready to surrender your heart to God because that's what I'm doing. I'm showing you how to train your heart to hear what God is saying. That's so good. That's so good. And one of one of Diana's um, uh, coaching programs is training the training the ear to hear to hear right. And so training the ear to hear, because what we do is, is we hear what we want to hear. We hear what's going to pacify us or what's going to help us. But are we hearing what God has to say for us? And I think that forgiveness of an, of an absent father, whether or not it's your father or your child's father, that level of forgiveness takes a lot of digging. It takes a lot of searching. It takes a lot of deliverance. It takes a lot of freedom because there are a lot of emotions that are, um, you know, really buried down into that type of hurt. And so to know that you are here to support those women, it just, it just really, it really adds value to moms and adds value to them um, growing and, and building that type of relationship with their children. So I absolutely love that. Okay, so your chapter is for people who are in a space of unforgiveness, they're struggling with unforgiveness, and you want to help them address the matters of their heart. You want to help them not only forgive themselves, but forgive again, their fathers, or even the fathers of their children. Right. Okay. Okay. And so let's talk about the problem that you're going to solve you know, for the reader, when you sit down and you say, this is the problem that I'm looking to solve for the reader of this chapter, what would that look like? Um, the problem I want to, I want to bring it back to them examining them. Cause I love that you teaches us every time there's a root to everything. So if it's if it's a mom and she's having a, a, a issue with unforgiving of her her baby's her baby father, there's still a root to why she's having a a reason why she can't forgive that father. So we need to get to the root of why she can't forgive in the first place. Is it because of something that happened to her in her childhood? Is it because of her father wasn't there, her mother wasn't there? Is it because of her upbringing? Well, I'm trying so, but I'm turning the attention back to ourselves because so many That's times so we good. blame we blame it on other people without looking at ourselves. So it's gonna put you in a place where you have to see what what was my responsibility in this and what is the root of it um, of what it of what's causing it because um, I think sometimes we don't understand how internal things affect us outwardly in so many different ways Absolutely. and we, we walk around like people don't see it it might not come out in your life this way but it will come out in another way down the line and another thing that I love is because sometimes we have we're we can be grown women but we're broken little girls and if we never wow. fix a broken little girl we're constantly we, so like I said I was a broken little girl because I had my first, I, I lost my first baby and I only wanted to have that baby to feel love. And so then I got pregnant with my second baby. I grew my baby in my brokenness. She, she grew nine months in my brokenness. I had her out of brokenness. I brought her into the world and I was raising her in my brokenness because when you broke, like you, your, I think your, your sight of things are diminished or tainted because of your brokenness. So she grew in brokenness. I was raised in brokenness. And then a lot of times I was breaking my kids because of my brokenness. Wow. So we have to do it. It's a trickle down effect. And if we don't, if we don't interrupt the pattern, the pattern continues. And you know what? Oh my goodness. You know what? And I think that a lot of times we think that because I don't outwardly express brokenness 
or because I've pushed it under the rug that our children won't still be affected by it. And mm -hmm. so one of the things, I don't know if you remember, but we had did we went through a rejection recovery. You you went mm -hmm. through it with us. I so did. going through that, going through that rejection recovery, you remember we had to find out the root. What where was that initial, where did that initial rejection happen? Where did it start? And so some, for some of us, it started in the womb when mm -hmm. our parents said, you know, I don't even want this kid or, oh my gosh, or, or maybe, you know, contemplated uh, abortion or maybe, you know, contemplated adoption or whatever the case was, that first form of rejection started there. And so what I love about what you just said is the brokenness. You grew your child in your womb in brokenness. You birthed your baby in brokenness. And if it wasn't for you saying, you know what, I need to heal in these areas or my child is going to directly or indirectly be affected by this brokenness, then I'll never break the generational curse. That, that's, that's so deep. And, and I, I like, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just so excited for the women who's going to have the opportunity to read your story and connect with you because I strongly believe that we're so, as you just stated, we're so accustomed to blaming someone else. One of the things that you said at the top of this, you said, listen, you laid down with that person. <laughs> like you, you knew some of the habits and characteristics <laughs> of that person when you laid down with them. <laughs> the problem is, is that you assumed that they will change that things will be better. I, no one can say that there wasn't a, a red flag somewhere, right? But did we take that red flag? Did we say, hey, hold on, there's a red flag. Let me, let me pay attention to that. And so now, instead of you blaming that person or blaming their, their family, let's look at self. Your program, your chapter is about self-examination so that I can heal because it doesn't matter what someone else did to you. Something that I've learned is that we control our emotions, our thoughts, and our words. And the moment that you allow someone else to make you, or you know, you put your happiness on someone else, or you put your healing on someone else, you have completely surrendered control of you. And so if we're going to do better by our children, you know, we always try to say, I'm, I'm doing this so I can make a better um, life for my child. I'm doing this so that I can make her. Well, if you're gonna make a better life for your child, it's not about telling them what to do. It's about healing and becoming a better you first. So that's I, really, really good. And I want to say this to the moms as well too, but because before, because of my brokenness, um, as I also talks about in the um, book, um, I had the mentality, I can do just what I can do exactly what a man do. If he cheat, I can cheat better. Ooh. And I'm going to be done cheating on you before you cheat on me. And I can't wait to tell you that I cheated. And so I, I love how God is so amazing, how he do things. God, I'm glad that God blessed me with daughters because they changed my behavior. However, what I, when I became a mom, I wanted to hide all those things. I wanted them to say, hey, I'm the best mama you ever met. I ain't never did nothing. And so I, so, so I created those walls. Like I wanted my daughters to think that I was perfect this perfect mom because I felt that if they knew how I was they would feel some type of different way with me and I'm so glad that I went through your transformational program because it taught me hey those walls that you created is the same walls that you have to tear down like let your daughters in let them see because you you're giving them a, a false perception of what life is and you make them feel that because you're so perfect you're not going to understand what they're going to and that's another thing that changed my life once I started letting them in and not caring about the thing the things of my past is the things of my past I can't change those things and um I once I did that it was a whole our total different our relationship changed because I wasn't trying to be something that I wasn't. Yes, these are things that I have done. I have gotten over them and they still love me more. Like it, it didn't change the way it, they're not going to love you less. They're going to still love you. And that's why I wanted to tell them like, don't be afraid to let your kids, I'm not saying telling them all your business, but don't be afraid of hiding things that they might eventually find out later. It's better for them to come from your mouth than for them to hear from somebody else. Absolutely. I, absolutely. So 
it's better for us to have that open. I mean, okay, one of the things we know, you know, I'm, I'm your mom, I'm not your friend. Okay, right. you know, Definitely. all right. I got that part. But <laughs> I still want you to know that I'm a woman, that I'm human, that mm -hmm. I understand. And so you saying this makes a lot of sense because of course, as children, we grow up, we didn't know anything about our parents. I didn't know. <laughs> I knew no, they were just my parents and I was supposed to listen to them. And so of course, as I got older and I start having real grown woman conversations with my mom, I'd be like, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> stop, right? But I love it because we have that type of relationship where we can have that type of open dialogue. We can talk to each other. And instead of trying to hold back, or like you said, keep a secret or, or be in shame about mm -hmm. what you've done, especially with daughters, we have to have that open dialogue so that we can stop them from having, you can't just say, one of the things, you know, that we talk about is sex. And I know that, you know, we, waiting until you're married to have sex is biblical. And right. baby, I didn't understand why it was biblical until I learned Christ. And I said, oh, this is why you said, wait until mm -hmm. you get married. But that response to a 15 year old, a 16 year old may not be enough for them to understand. But mm -hmm. if you have the conversation, like, listen, when I was 16 years old, these are the things that I did. And these are the consequences that I suffered from. Now you're able to relate. Now I'm able to transform your way of thinking. Now I can connect with you. And again, like you said, it's not to tell all your business. Your kid don't need to know all your little right. dirty details. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you want them to be, um, you want to connect with them so that you don't make them feel like you're so superior or you're so high that you've never done anything wrong. Right. So I really, really like that, that suggestion to moms, especially moms, you know, I don't have daughters, but even to, with my sons, I still want to have that type of open relationship with them. They're little now, but when they turn teenagers, I want them to want to come talk to me and, and be open with me, but I have to be willing to be open with them as well. Yes. So I really like that. Okay, so we've talked about who your chapter is for. We've talked about the problem that your chapter is going to solve for the people. Diana, tell us why is it that you felt like you should share this message with the world? Um, because I see it so much um, in so many women when we're having conversations. If you put a if you put a, 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 a twenty women in a room, it's like fifteen of them have problems with forgiving. Um, so I wanted, that was one of the reasons I did that. Another thing I wanted to do is change the trajectory of how people view daughters. Um, because I, that annoys me when somebody say, oh my God, you got two teenage daughters. I know you pulling your hair off or I know you got a strong drink. I want to change that because no, that's not my testimony. It may be yours, but it's not mine. So I want it because I want I want to be an advocate for them that all teenagers and all girls are not bad. It's the, it's the thought that's been put in their mind that make them. So that was another reason um, I wanted to do it just so we can, we can, if we, if we catch them while they're smaller, I think we'll have less broken little, best broken girls growing up. So. Absolutely. I, I, and I totally, I totally agree with that. And I appreciate that. Um, and so with wanting to share this message with the world is really helping moms create a better lifestyle to create a better approach to you know the absence of their children fathers to forgive them yes. one of the things that i've i've noticed with that entire dynamic is not only forgiving them but learning how to pray for them learning how because keep in mind that absent father your child is a product of that absent father. Absolutely. And so, so that we don't continue that generational curse, we have to pray over that child and over the absence of the father so that that child don't have resentment, so that yeah. that child still loves, so that that child doesn't grow up and you know, follow the same footsteps and not on purpose, because I'm sure even the father may not have meant to be absent, you know, that may not have been, been his intentional uh, decision or his original de uh, decision rather, but because of that generational curse, we, we seem to always fall victim of that. So um, with that being said, from you working with Chase Great and you being a part of the NIP certification program and being a part of this anthology, 
tell us about your experience. What have you received out of this experience so far? Oh my God. Well, I'm a, I'm going to go back to even when I went through um, the transformational program that you was offering. Phenomenal because again, it, it was the beginning of me looking at me compared to me saying woe is me it put the <clears throat> it put the spotlight on me to search me and what were my issues and why why and what what damage it had caused in my life and I'm I really love that your niche certification because when I first came I was like I'm called to young girls I'm called to young girls and then you made sense like okay Diana you can be called to the girls but you put them in a situation if they're coming from a broken home and they're going to their moms, you put them in a situation where are they going to, what you're teaching them is going to oversee what their mom is teaching. So she said, you know, why not start at the head? Because once I, th one thing I noticed when I went through transformation, once my daughter started seeing me change, it started changing them. It started changing my mom. I said, okay, so wow, that makes good sense. How about let's start with the mom or we can do a mom and a daughter thing together, but start with the mom. And so I do love that Chase Great has done that. Um, That's definitely one of the things I really love because you say be real specific in what it is that you're doing. So will no one have a confusion. So like I did, I did say, I thought I was called to young girls, but I'm called to the moms. Like, let's hit the mom. Let's change, let's change the mom's mindset. And then the kids, I think, be more recessive sometimes to, okay, I see this change in my mom. Let me change as well. So absolutely, thank you, absolutely. Great, like a phenomenal, phenomenal Latoya. Like, but sometimes I do be wanting you to cuss me out because I be needing a good cuss out, but you don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I do in my own little way, you know, it, it may not be as as harsh, but you know, I have I have my no, I be need to say now, Diana. Now you know you trifling. You you girl. <laughs> but, but you don't do I that. You like <laughs> You be like, Diana, come, come back, come back, come back. You know, you gonna be like, you know, but it's, at the same time, I love your grace that you give us. And you, like I said, and it's amazing how you see things in us that we don't see in ourselves. And I, I really definitely, Chase Grace have definitely changed my life in more ways than one. So I appreciate that. What about you being an author? Um, one of the things that I'm just excited about is that this is something that you've always, you know, said that you wanted to do. It's something that you wanted to establish for yourself. How has the experience been with you writing your first book? Um, I'm going to say it's been great because procrastination, like me thinking I got more time to do something, I always, and so it feel good. That's one of my things. I start things. And then if I can't see the end result before I start, I don't finish it. And so um, with this book, I'm glad to say that I finally started something and I didn't stop until it was done. So that's, that's like a, a good thing for me to know that if I just put the work in, it can be done and don't worry about the, you know, the latter worry, you know, just do the start and then let God prepared steps for me compared to me trying mm -hmm. to be him and figure it all out before I have to. Okay. Okay. I love that. Okay. So we have a question. It looks like um, one of our viewers asked, if that isn't your testimony, how can you assist the ones who have those challenging daughters? Okay. So you know how you were saying, you know, your testimony is it that you have, you know, fast girls or out here girls how do you still how are you able to still uh, support mothers who may be going through those type of issues with their daughter um so <clears throat> again to everything there's a rule like so i would say you would, we would have to because if, if you have a daughter if she's fast she's doing so she's pause pause i want you to say it the way you just got it what what you get ready to say. I know what you get ready to say. I want you to say, I want you to respond to that question because you were getting you were getting ready to say it, but you're trying to clean it up. Say it the way you got it. Um the daughter is probably she's probably acting out because of a root of a hurt a, a issue. Now, because again, sometimes we as parents, we think we know everything. The parent could be the reason why she's being the way that she is, but we don't 
we always look at it them. I guarantee you there's a root to what she is. And I'm not saying by far my daughters are perfect. I'm saying is that I had to stop back to see I'm not a mom that know everything. However, mm -hmm. there's nothing new under the sun. So we have to try to outsmart them without, you know what I'm saying? Like without doing it in a way, I'm your mama, you do as I tell you to do it as I say. So it's, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we would have to, like, I would have to, you would have to sit down to have a conversation with the daughter to see, okay, why are you doing these things? And if you sit her down or I can, if you put the mom and the daughter in the room together, it's going to come out what the issue is or what the root is just based off their language or just based off the conversation, what the root is. And so we have to figure out why is, why is there an issue? So it can be done. I'm just saying mine is different because I didn't want, I changed the trajectory because everybody say they this, they that, and they that. And, and I didn't want that. I didn't want those seeds being sown into me or into my daughter and I have to raise them. Mm -hmm. So I changed the trajectory, mm -hmm. I changed the trajectory of that. And it was mainly when I started talking to my daughter more as, as a more of a comp, uh, more of a, I'm not going to say compromise, it's more of, I hear what you're saying. And then mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's still up to me how we interact and deal with what the situation is without saying, oh, okay, you'll be okay. Because kids, kids and children go through things as well. So again, what if some so, of her daughter, what if some of her daughter issues mm -hmm. is, was mm -hmm. rooted in her, you know what I'm saying? So, and it, I'm not, it sounds I'm not, like it sounds like you're saying that if you're having these type of issues with your daughter, you need to check yourself because absolutely. because the what you're saying is is you had to get to the root of self before you were able to further support your daughters, for you to Absolutely. show up differently in your daughter lives, for your daughters to not have those different issues that a lot of teenage girls may go through. And it's because Diana checked the root of self first. And so I think, and that's that's what I heard initially when you started talking is, if you're having, you know, the daughters who, you know, maybe they're struggling with promiscuity, maybe they're struggling with bad behavior, maybe they're struggling with attitude problems, all of these different things that, you know, are, stereo, are stereotypes of a young girl, maybe we need to check self, because it came from somewhere. We Absolutely. are products of our, of our, of our parents. You know, yeah. we're the product of our parents. So if I had a bad attitude at 16, then some probably somebody else probably should have been checking their attitude. And then uh, then uh, then uh, another thing too, Latoya, like they don't like sometimes some kids feel they don't have an outlet. Or yeah. what if they feel like they can't go to their parent and tell their parent what the real issue is? So they take their outlets into other things. They're, what they're doing is they're getting attention, even if it's the wrong attention. They're doing an outcry, but we overlook that outcry as, oh, they got a bad attitude, or they don't want to be, and we're not looking at that's how come. So that's good. That's good. I love that. So, Diana, please share once again how can, if we have moms who are looking to learn more about this level, this, because this is a whole nother level of forgiveness. If they're looking to learn this level of forgiveness, learn um, different strategies on how to create better communi communication skills and build better relationships with their daughters, how can they reach you? Um, they can reach me on Instagram at Diana underscore English underscore. Um, they can re reach me on Facebook. Um, um, my private page is Diana English and my group is um, A Mom's Touch. Also, I will be having a program coming out next year called I Forgive Me, Breaking the Cycles of for um, Forgiveness. Um, so those are the things right now. And I with love the, it. Uh, so with, make the program, with that program, we can mm -hmm. either do it where we start with the moms or we can do the mom and the daughter or the daughter. So, but... Um, it's going to be like a two, it can be for a mom and a daughter, or it can be just for the mom. The mom want to start with herself first. So it'll be a twofold thing. That's going to be, that's going to be amazing. So listen, make sure you search a mom's touch on social media, 
join the group. It is for moms who are looking to build better relationships with their daughters and really looking to break free from that unforgiveness from the absence of their children's father. So she's, I'm gonna make sure that Diana puts that link in the comments so that you can click the link and join the group. So Diana, as we wrap up this fantastic discussion, because I could talk about this all night. Um, I, I have, I've, I have sisters, you know, I love my dad. He recently, well, it's been a year. So he, he passed away and, you know, in his earlier years, he made a lot of big mistakes when it came to my other siblings. And so we've had this conversation on and on and on and on again. And they always ask me, how did you get this perspective? Like, how do you think this way? And it's because I decided to forgive. Mm -hmm. I decided to forgive my dad. Yes, my dad, you know, he was in my life, but he wasn't a part of my life. And there's a difference. But I decided to forgive him. And something that you said is I learned that his parents were great influences when it came to the affection and the love that I wanted as a child. And so I could no longer hold him accountable for something that he didn't know. And if that father don't, if they don't have Christ, listen, you got to forgive because yeah. without Christ, that type of healing won't take place. So as we wrap this up, I want you to tell us something. I want to, us, I want you to tell us three things. Now, Kamika owe us one thing. I think Toya, Dr. Toya gave us something at the very end. I want you to share three things with us that we cannot Google about you. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna share one bad one. My daughter, I hope they're not on the live. They're gonna kill me. Um, they are. I they on the live. I've been to I jail, know, but they will. I've been to jail <laughs> because I went to community <laughs> service twice. <laughs> now that's a that's a whole for real secret that we cannot <laughs> Google. Wait a minute. So if I go to Otis, if I go to Otis, I'm gonna see your picture. Uh. -uh. No, because it was for community service. No, that ain't gonna I'm be on the internet. I'm just Thank the Lord. <laughs> I'm just playing. But I did. <laughs> um, Hilarious. um another thing is um I want to be a a philanthropist. I love helping people. So I wanna be when God bless me, I wanna be in a position where I give single moms homes and cars. Um, but there will be a program in place so that it'll be a program in place where that'll be the, that'll be the finale of the program. Um, and mm -hmm. another thing is, um, what's another thing? What's another? So, so it looks um, like you're going to, I used to, to, I used to, huh? I said, look, okay, no, go ahead. I used to be the, <laughs> Don't be, don't beat me up. I'm afraid. I I'm be, afraid of this third one because that I'll, first one. I used to be the weed man's girlfriend. I used to love if they won drug oh, dealers, wow. I didn't talk to them. So, <laughs> uh, oh, thank, thank you, Lord, for deliverance. Let's let's all pray and just thank God for the deliverance. Uh, like, the ones with the jobs want to spend their money, so I had to get the drug dealers. I cannot listen. This is hilarious. One thing that that just cracked me up is she went from extreme to medium to extreme again. So we really didn't know what we was getting ready to get, right? We really didn't know. But you know what? I love it because once again, we need to let people know that because of Christ, I am who I am right? And before Christ, I was who I was. And so knowing that we have, that you have daughters, you know, these are some very important um, things that you want to talk about because you can help them learn by your experiences. So I am excited about that. Make sure you drop um, your group in the comments so that the, the women that are catching us can uh, watch you live or join you in your community. I thank you so much. Make sure you click the link in the caption so that you can join us Saturday, December 5th at 11 a.m. for our virtual book launch where Diana is going to come back before us and she's gonna do some training. She's going to uh, offer some strategies on how to you know, really get to the root of unforgiveness and what are some things that you need to put in place so that you can start 
to forgive you, the absence of your child's father? How can you forgive the, your, your child's father? How can you not be in love with them again, but how can you love them again? How can you pray for them? What are some things that you need to implement? And, and this is a, a real a real situation for a lot of women. How can you break free from the bondage and the hurt of what that relation brought to your life? So I'm excited about the virtual book launch and hearing Diana really offer her strategies and offer her, offer her training from her point of view. So make sure you click the link up in the caption. I'll be sure to drop the link in the comments so that you can register for our free virtual book launch and make sure you get the book, listen. Make sure you order your copy of Coach My Life, Volume 3. This book, if it's not for you, maybe you're not a single mom. Maybe your children's father is a part of their lives. Maybe you're not struggling with unforgiveness, but I know you know someone. And this will be a perfect gift to send a friend during this season when we're all really conformed to our homes, we're conformed to our children. You know, we've all been shift upside down, you know, over the past eight to 11 months. So why not go ahead and bless someone with a gift that literally keeps on giving. So join us for five ways to win during a pandemic for the virtual book launch, December 5th at 11 a.m. And make sure you order a copy um, of the book, Coach My Life, Volume 3. Order one for yourself and order one for a friend. Have a fantastic night. Diana, did you have anything else to say? Um. Not really. Just moms loosen up a little bit. Loosen up. Because <laughs> listen, and Diana has to, to, And another oh, thing they have to understand, like parenting don't come with a, it don't come with a handbook. You write this book as you go based on the child that you have. So that's good. That's mm -hmm. good. And every child is different. Every, every, every child, child is different. Is Absolutely. So have a fantastic night. Listen, make sure you join me tomorrow. It is my turn to share with you about my chapter. And I'm excited Yay. because my chapter is about how money really do grow on trees. So I'm excited about talking about my chapter. And I'm just going to go into some details about me and why I wanted to write about this and the journey that I'm currently in, in my business and in my life. So make sure you join me tomorrow, same place, same time, 7 p.m. And I'll see you ladies tomorrow. Have a fantastic night. Bye-bye.